Now let's come to the point. It's about you and your team. So let's discuss about users and user groups. When you want to work on the AWS resources, IAM is going to ask you, what is your identity? Who are you? So you will tell him that you are Jack Dawson Junior Engineer Cloud Team. And based on that, we need to add you to a particular AWS account or accounts. And based on this, we will attach the policies and permissions for you to work on this particular environment. Similarly, there might be a group of users that can be a part of the same account or a different account, but as a part of the user group. And yes, with IAM, you can create a single user and as well create a group and assign policy that applies to all the users within the group. So you can create single users and if you have a group of users, you can create a group for them and assign a policy that applies to all the users within that group. Now let's understand this concept. An AWS Identity and Access Management user is an entity that you create in AWS to represent the person or application that uses it to interact with AWS. And an user in AWS consists of a name and credential by which it can log into AWS. Don't worry about federated login or STS for now. Just think of a user to have a login credential. The point that is rightly mentioned here is that an IAM user with administrator permissions is not the same as the AWS account root user. If you remember when we created the AWS account, the first thing we got was the AWS account root user. Using this, we created a user with admin rights. And how did we do that? Yes, by attaching an AWS administrator policy to that user. And you should always remember that a root account user is not same as a user who has admin rights. And next is how do we identify the AWS user? Here are a few points that have been mentioned for uh, identification of AWS IAM user. So it could be a friendly name like Jack Dawson, John Doe or Rahul like we have. It could be an Amazon resource name ARN like ARN AWS IAM, the account ID colon user slash Jack Dawson. And it could also be a unique identifier for the user. This ID is written only when you use the API or AWS CLI to create the user. You do not see this ID in the console. So this is how we can identify an IAM user. And we'll also look into these. So don't worry about it. Now let's see what type of access is normally requested with IAM to the AWS resources. The first one is access for users in your AWS account. As it is rightly mentioned here, you want to add users under the umbrella of your AWS account and you want to use IAM to create users and manage the permission. This is the simple one as it serves a one-to-one -one relationship for the users and the account. And the first one that we discussed now is access for users in your AWS account itself. So that is one type of access that you get for your AWS resources. Let's suppose the user is not a part of the AWS, but is already there in your company's directory service. In that case, for non-AWS user, the access provisioning can be done via identity federation between your authorization system and AWS. So this will be used when you have non-AWS users in your identity and authorization system and they need access to your AWS resources. And this is the one that is most widely used in organizations now. The next one is cross account access between AWS accounts. Like you have dev account or prod account and users from each of the account want to access uh, resources in another account. So we make use of this when you want to share access to certain AWS resources with users under other AWS accounts. So I hope these three points are clear. The first one is access for users in your AWS account. Second one is non-AWS user access provisioning via identity federation between your authorization system and AWS. And the third one is cross account access between AWS accounts. And these are, remember, these are using IAM to give user access to your AWS resources. So these three can be the use cases for you when you want to provide access for users to your AWS resources.